pleasant good day to you. We are really happy and delighted that you have decided to join us today for another episode of Pastor's Corner. We know that many of you look forward to joining us and to experience new insights, a greater insight into the Word of God and in different topics. Today we are speaking about denominational and scientific perspective on health. And we know that health is a big topic of today. So we will look at it from a biblical perspective and also from a scientific perspective. All right, so we just want to remind you to like and to share the page, whether you're on, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. Um, let persons know what's happening here and Pastor's Corner is on. All right, and we will be having some really inciting, really um, um, deep, deep discussion as the questions are posed and the, answer, the answers are given, we pray and hope that the Spirit of God will speak uh, to you and will guide you into making better decisions as it relates to your health. So at this point in time, we bow heads and we will pray. Father in heaven, we are happy, dear God, for the opportunity that you have given to us so we can lead out in this episode of Pastor's Corner. We pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will stimulate our brain cells, dear God, so... The, the responses will be directly from your throne and will reach the hearts of your people. Continue to be with us, even be with the viewers, the listeners. We pray to God that they will be inspired by the responses. And as a result of that, they will be more health conscious. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all with me today, I have two gentlemen, competent gentlemen, who will be helping me steer that ship as we discuss such an interesting topic. So to my extreme, extreme left, uh, there is a competent young man there. <laughs> he will tell you his name and a little about himself as we get into the discussion for today. Thank you very much, Pastor. I am Pastor Edward Guillaume. I'm the Health Ministries and ADRA Director of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. All right, thank you, Pastor Guillaume, and we are happy that you are with us today. All right, then to my immediate left, I got a competent man of God there as well, and he will help in today's discussion, and he will tell you his name. Many of you might be familiar with him and a little about himself. All right, thank you so much, Pastor Paul. Pleasant good day to everyone. Um, it's good to be in your company, Pastor, and also with you, Pastor Guillaume. Um, it's a privilege to share with the viewers on this important topic. I'm Pastor Oliver Scott. I serve as the Executive Secretary of our conference and also the Prayer Ministries Coordinator. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so as today, as I said to you, we are speaking about denominational and scientific perspective on health. And um, sometimes when some health decisions have to be taken, as you remember, the, the last um, time when the pandemic was at its peak, there was so much different views and so on. Um, so today we'll get some general principles that will guide us when it comes to making health decision um, from a scientific pros perspective and also from a denominational perspective. So the question that I will immediately start with is, what is health in a holistic fashion from both the World Health Organization and from the Word of God? So what does the World Health Organization say about health? And what does the Word of God say about health in a holistic manner? So I'll start with you, Pastor Guillaume. All right. Um, to respond to the question, the World Health Organization, they define health as the state of complete physical, mental, social, and I add spiritual well-being and not merely the absence of disease. And um, in the Bible, in 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. All right, thank you. Pastor Scott, would you like to add something to that? Well, uh, I think Pastor Guillaume um, responded very well in terms of giving the definition from the World Health Organization. I, I cannot add to it because <laughs> I would be redefining um, you know, what, what they have stated. But from the biblical standpoint of, of health, um, I would say that when we examine the word of God, health has to do with the spiritual, 
physical, social, and mental well-being of an individual. And there's a biblical premise for it. We see it with Jesus Christ when the Bible affirms that he grew in wisdom, that's mental health, in stature, physical, in with favor with God, the spiritual, and with man, the social. And God wants us to be holistic um, as far as our wellness is concerned. Okay, so based on what you, you, you just said, that, that you can be physically healthy and your mind can be sick. Yes, that, that, that can happen. Although there's a correlation between the, the mental state and also the physical well-being. All right, good. I just want to get that clear. Pastor Gil, I know so, you want so to when, add something when God to created us, When God created us, he created us as four-dimensional beings. So we are not compartmentalized, but we are four-dimensional beings. That's why health here must be holistic. So you cannot focus only on physical or mental or social or spiritual, but it must include all of them. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and this is, this is very important because... Um, Sometimes you see people take a lot of effort into exercising, so they might want to look healthy, but it's not just enough to look healthy. It's just like sometimes I tell people, I don't want a vehicle that looks good and doesn't work properly, because all it does is that it looks good, but really and truly, if it's not able to function good, it's, it's no good, all right? Because what sense is just looks without the body being healthy, right? And even today, um, we see that in our world today, a lot of people are, um, they pay a lot of attention to cosmetics, you know, to look good and to take selfie and so on. So they want to look as though they're healthy. They want to look as though they are well, but based on what the Bible is saying, is not just about how you look, but you should be feeling that way. You should be able to be sung on the inside as well. All right? Nice. So does God require health of his people? All right, we have two texts that you like to look at. And the first one you look at is Todd John, Todd John 2. All right, it's a well-known portion of scripture. And it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. All right? It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. And we look at one from Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Exodus 15 and verse 26, and it says, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of, of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give air to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of this disease upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The question again. Does God require health of his people? Yes. Pastor, Pastor Scott. The, the answer is an absolute yes. Um, God wants and desires his people to be, to be healthy. Um, the first text you read, for example, talks about um, the holistic well-being of man, that thou mayest prosper. So when we think about prosperity, we think of, of finance, mm -hmm. but that is included. But God wants us to, to prosper and to do well and fear well in a very holistic manner. Um, so, so Paul, in speaking there, he's referring to God wanting us in that way. For example, to be happy, to have joy, to be able to feel good and function well, Yes, to have the material and the economic blessings, but it includes the physical health as well. And it talks about being in health even as a soul prosper. So there's a balance here. It's not just being in health in an isolated manner physically, but being in health as a soul prosper, so relating to the holistic being. So, so the both of you are right. God wants us to be healthy physically, but he wants us to be healthy in general. And this text speaks to, to that um, holistic well-being of mankind. And that's God's desire for us. And when it comes to the second text that you, that you read, it brings in the spiritual connection um, to health. Okay. Because without God, you can try all of the exercise and drink the water and all of these things. 
and still be lacking in terms of ultimate health. Um, but the Bible is saying that when we are faithful to God, God is the one that is going to bless us with good health. He's going to prevent the diseases of the Egyptian from coming upon his people and he's going to take care of, of us. But we must not be naive to think that if we pray whole day but we do not exercise and do the other things that we're going to be healthy. So there's a balance where we make the effort but we also connect with God and depend upon him to grant us the favor of good health. All just right, thanks. And just Go add, ahead. Add to, what, to add to what Pastor Scott would have um, said, it requires obedience. Yes, it requires obedience. Obedience to the health laws. We oftentimes speak about it, but there's, there are ten. Ten laws of health. So we have the eight that we usually speak about, but the additional two is personal and environmental hygiene and purity. Purity. So that gives a ten um, in terms of the health laws. But it's not just the obedience to the health laws, but also obedience to the moral law. And if you read the spirit of prophecy, you will see where you cannot keep the moral law and neglect or violate the health laws. So just as we um, keep the moral law, God requires us to keep the um, health laws as well. And when we look at the two texts, you will see that it speaks to that as well. All right, and that's, that's really important because um, as you go forward in, in taking care of yourself, um, because as I stated earlier, and some people, they go to the gym and all those different things, and um, then when it comes to eating, they don't, they're not conscious of what they eat. So they make the outside look good because they might want to go, okay, I want to lose some of the belly fat, and I want to this, and I want to that, right? But that's just on the outside. But to what you really eat, it goes on the inside. It affects how your body functions. All right, so you have to be mindful of that. And even some of the basic health laws, um, like the clean and the unclean food, the fatty foods, and all those different things, people will say, I'm eating what I want. But if you eat what you want, and then when you get sick, you want God to heal you, then how does that work out? Because the same thing that you're doing to get sick is the same thing you want God to reverse and make you better when you want to continue to do the same thing that you're making you sick. And you see, there's a... There's a a link between the health laws and the moral laws. So there's a, the law that says thou shall not kill. Mm -hmm. And many a times you look at that law as taking up a gun and killing somebody, you know, committing murder. But some of us, we kill ourselves with our forks, our spoons, our knives. You know, we overeat, we overindulge, all of those things. So there's a, 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 really, a link between the moral law and the health law. So you cannot tell me that you are upholding the moral law and violating the health laws. It still hinges back on the moral law because it says thou shall not kill. So even though you may not kill other people, but you may be killing yourself. All right, thank you. And that brings me to the text in 1 Corinthians 10, 31 that says, whatsoever you eat, whatsoever you drink, and whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God, right? So it's not just what you do, but what you eat. And not just what you eat and what you do, but what you drink as well, all right? All right, so we're moving on nicely. It has been said in our literature that the health message is the right arm of the gospel. Can you give clarity to your listeners of what exactly is the health message? The health message is the right arm of the gospel. The right arm, basically, when you read the Bible, the right arm is where you have the power. The right arm is what, do, what does the defending and the opening of doors, right? So normally say, the woman should walk on your left hand, on your left side, so you hold out your left, but the right is a protector. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's, let's see what, what, right. what you have to say. How it relates to that. All right, so the, the health message, um, being the right arm of the gospel, is a message of reformation. Reformation, that's why it's called the health reform message. Reformation in lifestyle practices, in behaviors and choices. And those choices, behaviors and practices must please God. It must be in accordance with the will of God. It is a pioneer work 
of the gospel or the forerunner of the gospel. It is the entering wedge of the gospel using the ten laws of health as a vehicle to open doors for evangelism, break down prejudices, creates, it creates access to the hearts of many people. And uh, I just want to read a statement here from the spirit of prophecy that speaks to that in evangelism, the book Evangelism, um, um, 513, volume 1, it says, nothing will open doors for the truth like evangelistic medical missionary work. This will find access to hearts and minds and will be a means of converting many to the truth. So this message is basically or primarily about prevention, but it also can be curative. So this message, what we are speaking about here, can be preventative. It speaks about prevention, but it's also curative. All right. Thank you, Pastor Scott. And then I will ask you for some practical examples. Go ahead, Pastor Scott. Yes. And uh, well, Pastor Guillaume has, has spoken well. He has responded appropriately. Um, I would just add that the health message is it's a message that promotes holistic health and well-being. Yes. So the same thing that we were speaking about in terms of what health is, the message promotes that. It helps to facilitate it, to make it happen, to actualize it, to make it practical as you use, that's use it, that, that's that, it, that yeah. word. So when we implement and adhere to the, the health message, then we can experience literally holistic well-being. Um, the health message is also a health-giving and health-preserving message. It helps to contribute to our health, and it helps to preserve it. Um, as Pastor Guillaume mentioned, it's not just curative, but also preventative. Of course, the cure would come into play, but, we, but prevention is always better than cure. Definitely. And the one more thing I would add as it relates to the health message, you know, for example, we, there's a time when a synonym to, to it would be temperance, where there's a temperance message. And of course, historically, we know that it's one of the ways we express um, the health message by talking about temperance or temperance ministry. And temperance, generally speaking, the other ways in which you can define it, would, ha would have to do with the idea of us utilizing the good things, but of course, we do it in an appropriate or moderate manner. But when it comes to that which is going to contribute to ill health, we abstain absolutely from, from such things. So the health message is also a message of temperance. Right, so I want to ask, you all give a lot on the, what the nature of health message is. But here what the respond are looking for now. How can the health message be the right arm of the gospel? Right? Because we know the gospel is the good news of Jesus and all that. So how can we, we use the health message to evangelize? Pastor Scott. Yes. In, in terms of the health message to, to evangelize, so the health message is like, um, you know, remember the situation with Moses when he, when he had his both hands up and uh, Israel, were pre they were prevailing. The Israelites were prevailing and uh, when his hands got weak, both the left and the right, um, then they were losing the battle. Um, the health message is the right arm of the gospel. And so both arms should be uplifted to accomplish the work of God. But the health message is critically important to the success of God's church as we are also in warfare. Then it was physical, now it's spiritual warfare. How does that work in a practical sense in terms of evangelism? Um, the, the thing is that people are generally speaking receptive to health message or health admonition, things that are going to benefit them in terms of their self-improvement. And so when we as a church, we're able to present that to the people and help them to be healthier, happier, to live longer, to be healed from sicknesses, then it softens them up 
to receive the hardcore gospel. I like where you're going. I like where you're going. Keep going. And Jesus Christ himself applied that in his ministry. Um, he healed. You see a lot of it in the New Testament. And when the people were in need of food, he provided. We see that in the New Testament. And so Jesus Christ ministered to the health of the people. He did not just preach the, the gospel in terms of saying, you know, be saved, be ready for heaven. But he ministered to the temporal needs. He ministered to the need for health and for healing. And as a result of that, many persons were led to God and converted to God. And he did not just do it for the Jewish people, but he also did it for Gentile persons who are also drawn to the true and living God. Thank you. Pastor Guillaume, you want to I add just, something just, to that? I just want to give a quick example. Um, even on Sabbath, a testimony was shared. Um, Mary Bo Church, they had a health fair. And there was one young lady who came to the health fair. Um, she was obese. And uh, when they checked her, they realized that her HB, her blood level, was extremely low. I understand it was about four grams per DL. And so she was referred to the hospital for further management and treatment. And when she was discharged, the first place she went that Sabbath was at Mary Bo Church. Both her and her mom, they went there to say thanks to the church for what they have done. That, that lady, that young girl could have died because... Her HB was so low. People thought that she was bleaching herself because she looked so white, not knowing that it's because of her blood level that went down so low. Thank you very much. If, if I can add one more thing, um, apart from it being like part of the methodology for the sharing of the gospel in terms of a method that we, that we use, there's also the benefit um, to, to the method. Because what you find is that it, sh it shows to people that we are interested in their happiness and their well-being. And when we show interest, it's like where Ellen White tells us of Christ, where he mingled with the people, he ministered to them, you know, sympathized with them. Um, he won their confidence, and then he bid them follow, follow him. So when people see that we're interested um, in their temporal well-being, the benefit, the, the, the spring out of it, is that we are in a better position, having won the confidence to say, follow me or follow Christ. All right, thank you very much. And this was some good insights. And I just want to um, let you know that um, you cannot give people, or we, can, we cannot give people what we don't have. Right? So in order to minister to persons from a health perspective and to um, bring, uh, help them to be alleviated from whatever sickness they may be going through, we ourselves should be well. Right, we shouldn't want to help everybody to get well, and we ourselves are sick. Right, we shouldn't know what to do for others to get better, and we're not doing it for ourselves to stay well. Right, because it would it wouldn't make sense. Because in other words, if you can if you can't keep healthy, I don't think you can help me because you're already sick. Right, so it means therefore, if you have the remedy, I should be see, I should I should see the remedy taking effect in your life, and then I'll welcome you to help me in my life, right? So as God's people, we should take care of ourselves and follow the health principles, all right? We're moving on nicely. All right, the next question. What are the scientific basis of choosing the Genesis diet instead of the Leviticus prescription? All right, so let me just give you a little backdrop. The Genesis diet is where you get the fruits, nuts, grains, right? That's the Genesis diet. And then the prescription one in Leviticus, Leviticus 11, you can get in Deuteronomy 14, is was after the flood, that was provision that was made because the veget vegetation was destroyed as a result of the flood. So God gave man a provisional diet, uh, a permitted diet whereby man can now combine clean meat with the, what was prescribed already in Genesis. It was provisional because God expected man to return but when the meat tastes so sweet, man never went back. All right? So we're looking at it now. Now, what is the scientific basis of choosing the Genesis diet? One that doesn't include um, that the one that doesn't include any meat 
um, as compared to the Leviticus prescription. Pastor Guillaume. All right, Pastor. First thing I want to say here that the, the same nutrients, you know, there's a lot of arguments when it comes to that, but we have a lot of evi evidence-based research out there that um, speaks to that. So here, the same nutrients found in meat can be found in a plant-based diet. And today, um, it's not only from us, or not only us that preach that, but we're hearing it from um, medical doctors and so on these days that um, very few animals can be considered clean today. Even the, I mean, the clean ones, because of the current farming techniques that are used, the increased desire to make a quick profit, um, you find where um, people who regularly consume processed or unprocessed meats are linked to heart disease, to cancer, to diabetes, high blood pressure, and even premature deaths. Meat is also high in saturated fat and cholesterol. And uh, let me say here that our bodies produce cholesterol. The liver is responsible for that. So um, consuming cholesterol more than what the body is producing is stored. And where it is stored? It is stored in our arteries. And that's why sometimes the arteries become so narrow and people end up with high blood pressure and high cholesterol and even strokes and heart attacks and so on. So um, it is high in saturated fats and cholesterol which can clog our arteries leading to health complications. But on the other hand, plant-based diet helps to lower body mass index. So if that person is overweight, or if they are obese, just been on a plant-based diet. There are, there are a lot of research that have been done out there, evidence-based research that have been done that shows um, that plant-based diet can lower your body mass index or your BMI. Your, um, it can also aid in weight loss, reduce high cholesterol levels, improve cardiovascular health and function, improve insulin sensitivity. And what do I mean by this? I mean that persons who are on insulin, after being on a plant-based diet, they will rea realize that they require small amounts, smaller amounts of insulin to control their blood sugar. And persons with diabetes can improve their glycemic control. That is the maintenance of their blood level within normal limits. And also, there are a lot of research out there that shows that um, it can also help with um, hypertension. So there are a lot of studies out there that shows that um, being on a plant-based diet, you have more benefits than consuming a diet that is rich in meat. And mind you, persons who consume meat, the smallest portion on your plate, the smallest portion should be meat. But what do we see today? Sometimes people consume an entire diet of meat. Only meat. An entire meal of meat alone. No vegetables, no, no nothing, nothing else. Nothing, just meat and juice. Just meat alone, yeah, <laughs> which is, not, is unhealthy. All right. Pastor Scott, you want to add some insight? Yes, and uh, of course, m medical persons, medical professionals, and um, medical science will show that the plant-based diet or a vegetarian diet is, is definitely healthier than uh, that that is comprised of flesh or that is based on, on, on that. Um, for example, dairy product, a lot of diseases are traced to the use of dairy product. When you go to the, to the doctor, you know, there'll hardly be an, an instance where the doctor would trace your illness to a plant-based diet. But oftentimes, the doctor will trace your your sickness to the consumption of meat or to dairy products and would advise that you abstain from dairy products as a counsel for for good health so apart from the biblical and theological aspect of things um, even the scientific aspect of it showed that the plant-based diet is the better diet also 
When we talk about sans, sans must also not just be something that you proclaim, but it must be something that could be observed um, over a period of time. And the truth be told is that it is studies show that persons who participate in a plant-based diet live longer. Right? Um, that is very clear. And uh, even in certain the next question is for you, eh? so don't, don't go, go ahead of it. <laughs> right, so per persons who participate in a plant-based diet, you know, li um, live longer. So the science um, supports that because observation um, would be its own, its own proof. All right, yes. additionally to, to that, um, if you look at, if you consider um, Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, when they... Um, Daniel and his friends was offered the meat and all the fancy food that the king had. Um, they said they didn't want that. Because what happened other than just the health um, aspect of that is that a lot of meat clogs the brain as well. So you're not able to make proper judgment and because of the, the amount of meat and so on and the, the um, different things that it contains. So when you want a clear head, even they talk about... Um, fasting and you fast sometimes you think better and that's why they say pray and fast because when you stay away from those things you help you to get a better connection with god as well so it's not only the the health aspect um or the physical health aspect but the spiritual health aspect um helps when you when you eat properly right because persons who eat and drink anything they make a lot of irrational decisions and sometimes you wonder well how people could find themselves doing that is because sometimes what they eat, I remember I was, I was reading in the book uh, Ministry of Health, and they say sometimes you might find your children very rowdy and, and um, noisy and, uh, you know, outrageous in their behavior. And sometimes it's not because of any um, hereditary tendencies, but because of the meat that you place before them. Because sometimes you place those things before them and it's, okay, it's just like a treat. But sometimes that's a treat to them in your eyes, but it calls for a lot of misbehavior, right, because of what they eat. Additionally, when you eat the plant, um, the animal protect like them, like them, because or they are prone to to sometimes they different things, they those things. So we put those things. We have to be very. Sir, Pastor, Pastor before you chime in with this here, Christmas man. Oh yes, oh yeah. It's a big deal. So I just want to chime in scientifically. Pork, as uh, have one of the yet poor system of. Are completely good in food. Most, it is proven since are stored fat, which removed. Many, because you know when you have to, uh, um, you know, the whole come because the pig is being slaughtered, physically slaughtered, on that, which are factory operations. Um, pigs, sins, and whole muscles that affect of them is the medium for cancer growth. Lava, that is found in the trichonote, and that lava is called to destroy that lava. So, guys, and a matter of fact, let me of disease. Um, check it out. So, if sand, then the Bible has to be says that we should not even eat vacation. It's scientifically proven. And All right, thank you. I want to go to a National Geographic magazine. Published in several ways yeah, in that study. Still available online. Um, the, that published seven day advantage in what? And uh, to, what are you referring to? Okay. The blue zone, as the blue zone is proposed to be the world where areas. So the, um, they have their long lives, significantly the communities. Patagonia um, have outlived post and living lungs be uh, known to be the is that they participate and that is the for persons from other to the Adventist health just include include they are seven rest they live a very bad and so that kind of and they one of the areas these adventists and implement the part right, thank you very much much to add that area positive there and we'll have a
for his glory. Bless the Lord. Then she's finally getting by. by cancer. Too many questions. In a broken world, it's upside down, but not for long. No, not this my savior thing here. Cry all this day and drop, but in a broken world, eating out everything we from. I do want to give a to bless. So we are really happy for all this, you know, looking at it. I saw someone said, so, um, and they say something about fish while we were, um, while the special music, and uh, move over to them is not yours. Categories, so you have, you have fish. Anything is called flesh, eat flesh. So, um, flesh, so, uh, now, it is provers, heavy metal. These heavy metal cree, levy, metal fish, and shell contains trees. Um, in Grenada, of those human fish, fish, at times, will be cleaned to consume it and everything else. What you shown here that for being high contaminants, fish today, freshwater fish, those pollute. Thank you very much, Pat. Is there important to maintain? And please, yes. Um, good health. My, my main six where we look shows that when you beat the disease, in fish, the Bible, pardon, mother, land, and so says, sick things will be added on. To. We are here to all these things. They. No, these are things that held. I'll read verse set his love. Deliver him. He shall come in trouble. I will just show him my life and relationship with this too. And that's really important. Christian temp one nine. The coming of the Lord done away. Out of the diet. Hmm? That to go on that um as I look through. It, is, it came from the, the sentence and carefully waiting for the coming, which is we. Um, as you alluded to, eat meat in preparation and they are lost. That's not what it takes. Let's, but we wait. Back to you then. Flesh. So in not flesh, as I was saying, will cease again. With persons who first stop eating for heaven. Thank you very much and i think she's saying what um so just in thinking about because you see there try fish in the new earth realize garden of eden that's god's original and not not said here not that all right the things that we have to so if you eat it as well guys it's better for you if you eat flesh you're going flesh you're going to hell blood in days of noah so there is what was all right so be between what is the condition they are sick section between the end and this is the food give time that food get better scott can you give us something there's a correlation he's a man of god with god pray to god what god extended the thing about also gives us in terms in terms of obeying god is not um not this doesn't harm to them bodies eat and what's god god is good us with pray to him and for if we regard 
certain blessings from God or back. Glory to his divine will to grant that is not lying in power and that of healing. Just, um, just ministries, a miracle to keep bells, but a kind of disease. Health of persons, careless. Thank you very much. And this devotion, nomination that teach Adventist church, all right, I started with made mention, even um, same thing speaks about, I want to say it. All right, well, we can speak out, blessed. Um, God would have, from what is on, God would have already, um, when we look at God has given us perfect will, phrase, a plan based, and verse 20, a missive will, missive will, and, and you can see, even when the, I saw those who were unclean, um, still God had already, did, you have God text that you have ought to turn. So, yeah, we cannot sanctify. Yes, uh, faiths who, in some cases, misunderstand, and and then we ring, you know. And, um, it's a matter of belief that to faith things will seek to be for our life is applied. I'll give you a closer remark. This first Timothy, the day of God is given. Early dates. So if you have everything that is, then you more heaven. Jude chapter seven, go walk. God, then then you could print it. So we thank you for, in a few lines. With you viewers, is understand that so what He has given our lives in general world, things of this last second return. Same sentiments. Believe uh so this much one twenty seven. By obedience to the Lord, by All right. and we pray that God let us pray, oh God, an opportunity there. God could get some new in stem from you. Done. I want you to live on this earth, our soul prosperous, a kingdom.